Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, we are going to focus on IID normal samples. We already saw how uh, that is very important and in the previous lecture we saw quite a few related results uh, based on these IID normal samples. We will see, we'll see a little bit more uh, in this lecture and uh, going forward and when we start discussing statistical procedures in the later part of the course, uh, these normal samples uh, quite often assumption will be that the the data follows some sort of a normal distribution and under that there will be some standard methods and uh, there these kind of uh, statistical descriptions become uh, very important. Okay? So, let us see how descriptive statistics of normal samples behave. You remember we saw when we had IID samples, we would consider the sample mean and the sample variance and uh, we would do some uh, calculations with that. It turns out when the distribution is normal, you can say a lot more about uh, what the sample mean will be and what the sample variance will be. So, let us get started. Okay. So, what is the setting? The setting is normal samples x1 to xn are iid normal, the mean is the same mu and sigma square uh, is the variance. So, mu is called usually the distribution mean, sigma squared is called the distribution variance and the samples x1 through xn are uh, particular I mean random variables which are iid, they all have the normal distribution. Now, remember every sampling you will get actual instances of the samples, each x1, x2, etc. will take its values and those are the samples that are given to you and from there uh, we usually work with procedures for gleaning some information. Okay? So, that is the sort of uh, picture I want you to have in the back of your mind. Uh, so, like I said this assumption of uh, normal distribution is quite standard in many situations and it is a good approximation in many situations. So, uh, CLT like central limit theorem we saw before uh, is often called for and uh, used in uh, this context and even otherwise uh, the normal distribution is a very good uh, assumption to make when you do not know much about uh, what is going on. Okay. Uh, so, what is sample mean? We have seen this before x bar is x1 plus xn divided by n, uh, sample variance is uh, we denoted it as squared uh, x1 minus x bar whole squared, so on till xn minus x bar whole squared divided by n minus 1, you remember that n minus 1 definition uh, to make the expected <coughs> expected value of s squared to be equal to the variance, uh, we needed that n minus 1 there. And, and the crucial thing which I told you quite often when we introduce this is that sample mean and sample variance are actually random variables. In, in this sort of a description, they are clearly uh, random variables. So, every time a different sampling is given to you, you can expect different numbers uh, to show up for x bar and s squared, but uh, they will have a distribution and uh, can we find the distribution, can we think of uh, characterizing the distribution when the samples are iid normal is the subject of this lecture it turns out it's possible uh, once again we won't go into lengthy derivations of the results the textbooks have them uh, we'll only provide the final result in most cases and simply justify it uh, using some uh, arguments and reasoning okay so that's the topic of this lecture relatively short lecture uh, to describe uh, what the sample mean and sample variance distributions will look like when the samples are normal. Okay? So, let us get started. So, first the sample mean, we have seen this before, we have almost seen this before and we have proven this before. Uh, so, the sample mean is simply a linear combination of IID normal random variables. That is the first and simple observation. Uh, the coefficients of the linear combination is just 1 by n, right? it is 1 by n times x1 plus so on till 1 by n times xn. Okay? So, we know already this result that linear combination of IID normals is again a normal distribution. Okay? So, that is something that we know. So, sample mean clearly has a normal distribution. Okay? So, that is already done. Right? Sounds good, does not it? <laughs> okay? Sample mean is a normal distribution and what about the mean and variance of that normal distribution that the sample mean has? The mean is going to be mu and the variance is going to be sigma squared by n. Okay, both of these we already knew, right? See, the sample mean, the expected value of the sample mean is always mu. The expect the, the variance of the sample mean is always sigma squared by n, right? We know that, and that's uh, that doesn't need the normal distribution, right? So these two are true, uh, irrespective of whether or not they are normal or not. The last two facts, expected value of x bar and variance of x bar, but but in the normal case, what is special is the normal distribution. So the x bar not only has mean mu and variance sigma square. So, these two are true always, but this normal distribution is special. Okay? So, x bar will be normal uh, only when the uh, individual distributions are uh, normal as in when the normal individual samples are normally distributed, 
x bar is going to end up being normal as well. So, that is the special property of this. Okay. So, sample mean exactly characterized, the distribution is exactly characterized in the IID normal case and simple to describe also. Okay. So, that is the first property. The next property is sum of squares of normal samples. Okay. So, notice this is a slightly different uh, operation. Okay. We are going towards the variance, but you saw that in the variance, there were sum of squares involved and uh, what you are squaring in each case also ends up being normal in some sense, right? So, it is if you go back and look at this, uh, look at the description here. So, so you notice s squared is x 1 minus x whole squared. So, what is x 1 minus x? x 1 is a uh, uh, normal distribution and x bar is actually a linear combination of x 1 to x n. So, if you do x 1 minus x bar, you will get at another linear combination of x 1 to x n. It will be slightly different in the coefficient, but you will get some coefficient there and uh, that also is normal. Okay? And the mean of that normal distribution is 0. Okay? So, you can, you can do that. right? So, it is not very difficult to see this expected value of x 1 minus x is actually 0, is not it? Because x 1 has the same distribution as x. So, this is true. So, so given that uh, given that, that, that is true, so it's, it's, if you want to find the distribution of s squared, you should first know the distribution of sum of squares of normal distribution. Okay? So, that is needed. So, that is why we are going after sum of squares of normal samples. And here, I can assume that the mean is 0. Okay? So, I am going to look at the situation where x 1 through x n are IID normal, mean 0 and variance sigma squared. Okay, so, that is enough, right? When you want a distribution of s squared, I just have to look at this guy. Okay? So, it turns out this x i squared is actually gamma distributed. We have seen this before, is not it? x i squared, square of a normal distribution mean 0 variance sigma squared is actually gamma distributed, right? Gamma with uh, uh, one parameter as half, half and the other parameter as 1 by 2 sigma squared, right? So, we saw this result in the previous lecture. Try and refresh yourself. Square of a normal is gamma distribution. Okay? And here is a new result. Sum of n independent gamma alpha comma beta random variables is also another gamma n alpha comma beta uh, distribution. Okay? So, this is a slightly uh, non-trivial thing, but you can see why this is true. Gamma itself is a sum of several uh, exponential, something like that. right? So, when you, if you add up several independent gamma, you can expect the final thing to also be gamma. This is yet another result about these distributions. Okay? We will not prove this, but it is sort of easier to, I mean it is not intuitive in some sense. So, you add n independent gamma distributions, one of the parameters of gamma gets multiplied by n, the other parameter remains the same, okay? n alpha comma beta. So, now we are almost done. Okay? So, if you want to do x 1 squared plus so on till x n squared, you will actually get a gamma distribution of n by 2 and 1 by 2 sigma squared. Okay? So, this is the final result for sum of squares of normal samples. Okay? It is actually ends up being gamma distributed. Okay? So, notice the difference. Sum of uh, n IID normal samples will again be normal. But if you square each term, remember when you square, it, it takes only positive values, right? So, and the distribution changes. When you square itself, it becomes gamma. And when you add a bunch of squared things together, it still remains gamma. It is a different gamma distribution, gamma of n by 2 comma 1 by 2 sigma squared. Okay? So, the case when sigma squared is 1, usually the sigma squared equals 1 is the standard normal, is not it? Mean 0 variance 1 is called the standard normal. So, if you take sigma squared is 1, uh, you get gamma of n by 2 comma 1 by 2. This is called the chi squared distribution with n degrees of freedom. Okay? And it is denoted with this uh, notation chi squared n. So, this chi squared distribution is, a, is actually a gamma distribution, a special case of a gamma distribution where the first parameter is n by 2 and the second parameter is 1 by 2. Okay? So, th this, is the, uh, this is the distribution for sum of squares of normal samples. Uh, I guess there are many, some of these we, we sort of have an inkling for, some of these uh, we have not proven in detail, but you know, hopefully this is uh, clean enough to you and a good result uh, to remember. So, sum of n IID random samples, normal samples will be normal. Sum of squares of n uh, mean 0 variance sigma squared normal samples will be chi squared uh, distribution, scaled chi squared distribution. It will be a gamma distribution n by 2, 1 by 2 sigma squared. Okay? 
good thing to know. So finally, we are ready to state the main result about the distribution of sample mean and variance uh, for normal samples. Okay, so this is a result which we will not prove in great detail. Of course, we won't actually not even great detail. We won't prove it at all. Uh, but it's uh, maybe I mean you, it's easy for you to sort of justify for yourself why this should be true. Okay, we have seen enough results of similar favor. Uh, some of these things may be a little bit uh, confusing, but it's actually true, and it's easy to. It's not. It's not very easy to prove this, but you know, it takes a lot of calculation. So we're going to skip this proof in this class. Uh, but let's remember this result. This result uh, we should remember. We should know that the joint distribution of the sample mean and sample variance is known. Okay. So look at this result. This theorem puts that down very clearly. Uh, X1 to Xn are normal. Uh, IID normal. Oh, I forgot the most critical word there. IID normal mu sigma squared. Then the sample mean x bar is a normally distributed random variable mean mu variance sigma squared by n. So the marginal distribution of x bar is normal mean mu variance sigma squared divided by n. We know this. And the marginal distribution of uh, you know s squared is a scaled chi squared n minus 1. Okay, so remember chi squared with n degrees of freedom is gamma n by 2, comma 1 by 2, 1 by 2. Now this is uh, uh, chi squared with n minus 1 degree of freedom. Okay, So notice the scaling there n minus 1 s squared by sigma squared. Uh, so if you remember s squared is uh, x1 minus x bar squared xn minus x bar squared divided by n minus 1. Okay, So if you do n minus 1 s squared by sigma squared, you are going to get x1 minus x bar by sigma squared dot dot, dot till xn minus x bar by sigma whole squared. So this is the guy and this guy we are saying is chi squared n minus 1 distributed. So chi squared with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So this looks like you know n uh, random variables, n uh, uh, independent uh, identical sort of distributed random variables and you are adding them all up. Uh, shouldn't it be chi squared n, why is it chi squared n minus 1, uh, think about why that is true. It's a, there's a subtle difference between uh, the previous result we showed and uh, the result that we have here. Uh, I'll, I'll let you brood over it. There, there is a certain uh, difference here, uh, the, the distribution of, uh, so, so, so if you have all of them being independent, then you will have chi squared n. So, but here, all of them are not independent. Why is that? Think about why that is true. Okay. All the n guys are not independent. So if you take two at a time or things like that, you will get some, uh, so you can show some correlation properties which are interesting. But these, these guys together, all of them cannot be independent, right? Because if I give you uh, x1 minus x bar uh, all the way till uh, uh, xn minus 1 minus x bar, so you have this result, right? So, so I think maybe you can show this. So, so if you add up all these guys, x1, uh, xi minus x bar, uh, by sigma, what do you think you will get? Or maybe, maybe you know, I will just do n. Mm. Yeah, I will do n just for fun, I mean, it does not matter. So, what, what will you get here? If you do this, you will get, you know, the first term will give you summation xi by n, i equals 1 to n, that is x bar. And what will be the second term? Minus n times x bar by n, that is x bar is 0. So they add up to give you 0. So these n guys together, they are all not IID. Okay? If you have each of them uh, being normal, uh, identically distributed, but they are not all IID. right? So together there is a dependency. Okay? If you take n minus 1 of them, there will not be dependency. Okay? The last guy is like a useless guy floating around. Okay? So that is why you have only n minus 1 degrees of freedom or degrees of freedom sounds like you know how many, how many varying things are there. In these n terms, even though you are squaring and adding n terms, only n minus 1 are really independent. The nth guy becomes a linear combination. I mean, it is just directly determined by this, right? So given the n minus 1 guy, the nth guy will be, you know, a deterministic guy, right? So in fact, uh, they will not cause a distribution. So, so this n minus 1 sort of comes from there. Like I told you, we won't write down rigorous proofs, sort of high level intuitive ideas on to why this uh, result might be true is all I am giving you. Uh, the first result, I guess, is something we have proven very clearly, right? The marginal distribution of x bar. 
the marginal distribution of s squared is chi squared n minus 1. So, remember that there is a scaling there n minus 1 s squared by sigma squared uh, to make sure we get rid of all the other extraneous factors and we get uh, sum of squared normals uh, which leads to chi squared. But notice that n minus 1 because of this subtraction of x bar all these guys add up to 0. So, only n minus 1 uh, things are independent the last guy becomes dependent ok. So, good to know. Uh, and then uh, finally, here is the big result x bar and s squared are actually independent of each other. So, if you want to find the joint distribution of x bar and s, s squared, you can simply multiply the distribution of the marginal of x with the marginal of s squared and you will get the joint distribution ok. It's a nice thing to know, isn't it? So, these two are independent, the sample mean and the sample variance end up being independent and uh, the sample mean is of course marginally normal, the sample variance is chi squared uh, n minus 1 degrees of independent scaled version of that and uh, that is the big ticket result ok. So, we will use this result in the ensuing weeks ok. So, 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 so let me pause here, this is the final result I wanted to do this week, uh, but this is an important uh, breaking point in the class, in the course. Uh, so far, we have looked at the foundations of probability, various different distributions, types and manipulations and what they mean. Uh, all along, I have been carrying some implications on data and models and some uh, statistical sort of thinking. Uh, now, we will move purely into statistical procedures, ok. So, from now on in this course, uh, we will start putting out uh, data and samples and we will start developing statistical procedures, start understanding them. Uh, what kind of questions are asked, what type of answers do people give, how to interpret those answers and how to tell stories uh, based on data and statistical procedures. So, we will start doing that uh, from now on. Of course, we will do more from a foundations theory point of view. There are other courses that will build on this and take it further, ok. Thank you very much. Uh, we will meet again later.